cool. Hey guys, welcome to Make Anything. It's Devin here, and this is the CR10 3D printer that you probably see a lot on this channel. I think I use it for most of my projects. I recommend it a lot. The price to value for this printer is really great. It's usually around 500 bucks, cheaper if you can get it on sale. And it's just a really solid printer. You can print giant things, it's reliable. It's, it's pretty great, I like it. Still, it's not a perfect printer. I don't think there's such a thing. But I thought it would be really fun to do a practical episode where I print some more modifications for this printer. So we're gonna design and print some cool mods for this CR10 today. Recently, I reviewed the TiVo Tornado, which is basically a CR10 knockoff. It's very similar. It's not quite as reliable, so I still like the CR10 more, but there were some things about that TiVo Tornado that I did like. Specifically, their so-called Titan Extruder, which has this little gearbox that lets you manually feed filament in and out. And I thought it was really handy for just swapping out filaments, for loading filaments, for purging filament out of the nozzle. It's a nice little thing to have. So today we're gonna design and print a little mod for this CR10 that gives us a similar capability, makes it a little bit easier to work with, more user-friendly, and uh, we'll do another similar mod as well that you'll see at the end of the video. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna show you how to do it in Fusion 360, so let's get right into it. First of all, here's how you'll normally load filament into the CR10. The feeder has this spring-loaded lever that you'll press down and feed the filament in through this tiny hole, and it's not the worst thing in the world, but you do have to kind of reach your hands around the printer. It can be awkward and sometimes uncomfortable. So I just like the way that the TiVo Tornado did it better. So what we're gonna do is take advantage of this little shaft sticking out of the stepper motor, and we're gonna attach a knob onto that so that it's easier to turn and feed filament in manually. I'll use my calipers to get some real world measurements, and then I can sketch out a rough idea of what I wanna do. Basically, I'm just making this wheel, which can be as much as 40 millimeters in diameter, and that connects to this little shaft, which sticks onto that metal part of the stepper motor. With those measurements, we'll go ahead and open up Fusion 360 and start modeling out that idea. So I'll create a sketch on the right plane here, and then we'll use the line tool to draw out a half profile of that wheel shape that I want to revolve. We'll just have this simple L shape, and then I'll start putting in dimensions based on what I measured. So since this is a half profile, I'm gonna use half the measurement of the diameter, so that bottom shaft is gonna be 10 millimeters, but I'm just putting in the measurement as five. The top one will be 40, but I just put it in as 20. And then here we'll give this some height and figure out the thickness for the knob. We wanna come up with something that's comfortable, but not using an excess amount of material. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the revolve tool, choose that profile, and revolve around this center axis, and we've got our knob. Now I'll just sketch on this little circle right here, and we'll draw out the hole that's gonna go over that metal shaft. The base shape of that hole is just a circle, so we'll draw that out and give it a dimension. The shaft is five millimeters, so let's make this 5.25 to give it some clearance so that I can slip over the top. The rod also has this flat spot, which basically makes it so that when you turn the knob, it'll force the shaft to turn as well. So we're gonna model that in there. And the measurement I took there from the actual shaft was 4.5 millimeters. So we'll go ahead and just make this 4.55 for now. That should be enough. Then we'll extrude downwards and cut a hole all the way through our shape. Although actually, let's not go all the way through. Let's go ahead and edit that and make it so that there's a little bit of an offset from that top surface, just to make it look a little more clean. So I'll just offset that minus 0.6 millimeters from that top surface. That way the hole doesn't go all the way through. All right, so that's the basics of this shape. Pretty much all you really need, but first of all, I'm gonna add a chamfer here to make it a little bit easier to slip this over that stepper motor. And then we'll go ahead and add a big fillet right here to make this nice and strong, make sure it doesn't snap. And finally, let's do some cutouts on this big wheel. That way we have some better grip around the edges. So what I'm gonna do is just draw this circle on the edge here, give that a dimension of about five millimeters, and then I'll extrude cut that out of the shape. Then we'll go ahead and give this a little fillet so that there's no sharp corners. And I'm gonna go to create and use the circular pattern tool to pattern those last two features that I just did around the center axis. Now I'll increase the quantity here until the spacing between the parts looks good. And there, that looks pretty nice. So let's hit okay and there we go. We've got this kind of gear slash knurled edge that'll make it a lot easier to grip onto this wheel. So now we'll just go ahead 
and add some more chamfers just so that things come off the build plate better and again to not have too many sharp corners. Finally I'm going to cut some holes into this handle. For one thing it'll save some material but also I want to be able to look through the handle and see what's happening in the extruder when this thing is connected to the printer so it'll increase the functionality a bit as well. So I'll start by drawing those two circles for the inner and outer limit of the hole I'm going to cut and then I'm going to use the center rectangle tool to basically draw out one of my spokes. So let's see what that looks like at five millimeters. And I'll make sure this is centered with the origin. And then we can go ahead and select that and use the circular pattern sketch tool to pattern that around this circle. And let's go ahead and make five of those spokes. And then do an extrude cut and select just those parts that we want to cut out. So now I'll cut that all the way through and as you can see we've got this wheel that is all held together but it's got some hollow parts. I'll put some fillets on there because I always like to round things out. And there we go. That's pretty good but I think we can slightly adjust that last sketch to make these holes look a little nicer. So I'm going to open that up again and I'm going to bring this outer hole in just a tiny bit so that it's not quite so close to the edges. I'll make that inner circle a little smaller and then I'm also going to make the spokes thinner. So let's bring that from five down to three millimeters and see what that looks like. All right, I think that looks much better. So let's just go ahead, add a few more chamfers, and then we're ready to print this thing. All right, here's our model, fresh off the CR10, and we can stick it right onto that stepper motor. Right away, I can see that it turns nice and easily, and when we go ahead and heat up the nozzle, sure enough, we can go ahead and start feeding some filament through. This is actually working really well. If you turn the knob too fast, sometimes it clicks a bit, but if you turn it nice and slowly, it feeds filament through and works really well. It's also fun watching the wheel spin while the printer is in action. It's pretty rare that something works so well on the first try, but hey, I guess we got lucky. Although I did make some very slight changes just to make this a little more comfortable to hold. So as you can see, I made it a little thicker here. The print here is a bit rough because I was using really old filament but that's no matter, it's still functional, so we can stick that right onto the printer and get it working. By the way, I noticed that all my Bowdoin style printers basically have this same little shaft sticking out of their stepper motor, so I was able to use the same exact part on my Anycubic i3 Mega and the Anycubic Cossel. So that's great, but I still wanted to design one more knob to deal with a problem on the CR10, which is that there's no option built in to move the z-axis, which is really strange, but it seems the only way to move it is really to just turn it by hand, which is super awkward and annoying, especially if you've got that z-rod lubricated. It's just no good. So what I did was design another little knob that you can use to turn that z-axis without actually putting your hands on it. The trick is to loosen these bottom screws on the dampener of the z-rod here, which allows you to move that z-rod up. And we're gonna move it up just about one centimeter so that this top part of the thread sticks a little higher than it usually does. Once that's raised up, we can tighten these screws again, and then we can use the part that I printed and attach that to the top here. So we've got that big gear and then this little knob that sticks onto a kind of built-in bearing, which makes it super easy to spin this thing a lot quicker than you could do by hand. Now I'm able to move that z-axis a lot quicker and without getting my hands dirty. It's a super nice addition that I'm really glad that I finally did. All right guys, that's it for today. I hope you thought it was a fun little functional project. I'm definitely glad I did it because it didn't take too long at all and it's gonna make a big difference when I'm working with these printers. It's gonna make things a lot easier. I really like this knob. I really like this Z adjustment knob I did too. So if you got a CR10, make sure to download those on my mini factory. They're free. They're great modifications for this printer, if I must say so myself. If you've got any type of Bowdoin printer, I guess you can use this uh, extruder knob as well. So check it out, give it a go, and don't forget to stay inspired. <laughs>